Hello and welcome to the video for Thursday, April the 30th. Uh, this is for third grade and we'll be continuing our work working on area um, in rectangular shape. So let's go ahead and take a look at our unlock the problem. And again, this is for less than 11.6. So um, we are going to have a question later on that is going to ask us in the homework about talking about the three different ways that we can find an area. So one of them is by counting unit squares. So for the, all three examples, we're working with the same shape. Um, so the first thing that we could do is start by counting all of these up. Uh, again, if you want to go ahead and work on this part by yourself and pause uh, the video while you do that, go ahead and do so. I'm going to be talking um, throughout this. So I've got three rows of six. That's going to give me 18. Um, I could count each of them individually. Um, and that's going to give me 18 square meters. So I can use repeated addition and I can count my three rows of six to get six plus six plus six plus six. I'm sorry, so just three sixes. Um, so six. And that gives us 18. And then repeated addition and multiplication kind of use the same idea. We are going to have three rows of six, but instead of doing six, 12, 18, um, we are just going to multiply the numbers. So we may say that we could have the six here and then we have a three here and we know to multiply um, those numbers together to also get 18. So those are the three different ways that we can um, and then we can put 18 here. Um, those are the three different ways that we can find areas. So again, it's counting the squares using repeated addition or using multiplication. And all three of those can give us the correct answer. Um, I'm going to skip over this part in favor of doing the Sharon show. So let's look at number one for the Sharon show. Um, we're going to be doing number one, number three, and number five on this page. So if you need to pause the video to go ahead and do those on your own, again, choose whichever strategy works for you. We are going to use all three strategies, um, essentially. I'm going to demonstrate the counting one, and then we'll talk through the other ones. So we're going to have three rows. We have four objects in each row. And so if I were to count them all up, it would be one, two, three, four. Then I start the second row, five, six, seven, eight. And then the third row, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's gonna give us 12. And we can add four plus four plus four to get that 12. And we can also, this is our repeated addition, our multiplication, we can do three times four equals 12. So now for number three and number five, I want you to choose whatever strategy that you would like to do um, that you can accomplish it easily. So I would suggest if you are comfortable enough with your multiplication to try both of these using multiplication, because um, eventually we will get a shape that doesn't have the blocks and it will just be a regular looking rectangle that looks like this. And then they're going to give let's say our numbers for number three, we'd have a three here and a five here. And you would either have to manually draw in the blocks and then count them, um, or you could use multiplication uh, for that. So the sooner we can get to doing this part, the better um, as we go forward. So I'm going to use multiplication. So I have three rows of five and three times five is going to give me 15. For number five, I also have three rows and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so one of the things I recommend for um, third and fourth grade as you're learning your multiplication facts, if you don't remember the answer to three times nine, you can do three times 10, which is 30, and count backward three um, to give your amount for nine groups of three. And that would give us three times nine equals 27. Um, going on to the next page, uh, we are working with number seven and number nine. So again, I would choose whichever method that you want to use to do that. Um, and go ahead and pause the video when you're ready. Go ahead and come back. 
And so for this one, I have four rows and I have five objects in each row. So I can do four times five, which is going to give us 20. And any time that we're doing this, we could just say, um, we could do 20 feet squared. I've kind of skipped over that part. Um, that will be important later on. We would either use 20 units and then this um, exponent um, where we would have the number two up here. So it would be square feet uh, would be represented that way. Um, we will focus on that part a little bit more later on. Uh, for right now, I'm more concerned that we're coming up with the correct number portion and we can worry about the kind of technical details with how to write it later on. So for number nine, I have five objects in each row. So one, two, three, four, five. I have one, two, three, four, five rows. So I can do five times five for that. And that would give us, and we're saying that we're doing meters. So if we wanted to do this one, uh, it would be 25 and then M for meters. And then we would use the exponent two to show that we are doing square meters. So for the homework, which will be in a separate video, um, again, number eight, which is down at the bottom, uh, the way I capture the screen, uh, this part's cut off, but I, I will leave a thing in the Google form where you can type in your answers. So all three methods are what we talked about um, at the very beginning of the lesson. So again, that was counting each individual square using repeated addition or using multiplication facts. So those are our three ways that we could do that. Everything else, um, you're doing uh, two, four, six, one, and two on the back, and those you can choose whatever strategy you would like to use, um, whatever is most comfortable for you. And again, I would recommend try to get to the point that you at least try one of them using multiplication facts. And then if you're not sure about it, you can always go back, count each individual box and see if you got the correct answer, okay? So try to get toward where uh, you can practice doing the multiplication facts um, because that will make it a lot easier for us later on. So um, just as an update, um, there will be a homework video on Friday and then the new lesson video coming out at the same time. And then the homework for that lesson, which would be, I believe it's 11.8, uh, will come out Friday evening this week. And then there will be a new packet pickup on Monday, and that will cover uh, the last 10 lessons, or actually, I think for you guys, it might be nine, um, that we're going to do out of the Go Math book for this year. So we are skipping a couple things, but uh, we will hit all of the bases for the things that you need to know going forward into fourth grade. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Google Classroom, and I hope you have a great day. I will see you in the next video.